come down at once? I want to talk to you. Oh, Mother, I'm not dressed. Let me get my clothes on, will you? I'm in a hurry. Bob will be here any minute. Well, that's what I want to talk to you about. Come right down. Oh, shoot. You're always cutting in and spoiling things. What do you want, Mother? Look at me. I'm not half dressed. Here I am. Do hurry. I want to know where you are going tonight and with whom you are going. You've been out three nights this week and you haven't been home before three any morning. Oh, Mother, why are you always hopping on things? What difference does it make where I go or with whom? I'm all right. I can take care of myself. Perhaps. But it's a mother's right to know what her daughter is doing and where she is when she goes out these times. You must remember the Durboros have a name to keep up and a standing. I can't afford to have you mixed up in any unsavory affairs. You must think of your future. You're always talking about my future. It's mine, isn't it? What do you think I do, run about with gamblers and gunmen? You must have a fine opinion of me. I'm not sticking my opinion of you, Helen. I'm merely doing what any decent mother should do to protect the name of her child. Now, Bells, I don't need any protection. I can take care of myself. The trouble is, you're always trying to give too much protection where it's not needed. Now, look, Bob will be here any minute, and I haven't even selected my gown yet. Is there anything more? Yes, there is. Quite a lot. Sit down. I want to talk to you seriously. Oh, Prunes, Mother, you'll make me late. Uncross your limbs immediately. What a posture. I never heard of such a child. Suppose someone came in here and saw you. If they did, it'd be your fault bringing me down my undies. You're incorrigible. Now, I want you to promise not to take a drink tonight. I detected the odor of gin on your gown this morning. And Bob Crowder is no gentleman if he takes you places where they drink. Don't be silly, Mother. Everyone drinks everywhere. Why, even you have cocktails and highballs at your teas and bridge fights, don't you? That's different. If you must have a drink, take it at home. Bob is no fit companion for a young girl if he has to urge her to drink. And heaven only knows what happens afterward. What do you think I do? Take off my clothes and run about for the amusement of others? Helen, you're impossible. And I won't have you talk to me that way. I intimated no such thing. You're always so suspicious. You don't seem to know what life is today. Well, girls study biology in school and a lot of other ologies. We know what the male of the species is and all his phobias and tendencies. But is that any reason why it should affect our morals? Silence. That's enough. I'll hear no more from you. I'm ashamed of you. The trouble is, Mother, you're living in the past, when a girl was supposed to lead a sheltered life like a dummy and not to know anything. I suppose every time I come home late at night from a party, you expect me to be in trouble. Helen Devereaux, you go to your room and stay there. I won't. Yes, you will. Do as I say. Now, don't be a chump, Mother. I promise, Bob, and I'm going. You are not. Hello. Hello, everybody. Why, Sugar, what are you doing down here in your BVDs? Quarreling again? You two girls have to stop it. What's the row? She's been frightfully disrespectful. I forbade her to go out with Bob Crowder. And she defied me. Said she'd go anyhow. Well, I expect she would if she had a mind to. But what's wrong with Bob? He seems okay to me. Thanks, Dad. Bob's a peach, and he thinks you're a hundred percent, too. Well, give him my best and thank him for me. What's he done, Mother? Oh, nothing more than any of the other boys. But I just can't reconcile myself to young girls running about late at night and coming home with gin on their breath at four in the morning. I can't stand it. Now, Ellen, don't worry. There isn't a thing to fret about. Our little girl's all right. What's she done that other girls her age don't do nowadays? Oh, it isn't anything that she's done. But it's the terrible life they lead. I just can't help being afraid. There, there. I know it's hard to keep up with these fast-moving youngsters these days. But I'm sure they're okay. They may know more at 15 than we will at 40. But you can't blame them for that. Forewarned, forearmed. Oh, Tom, you're nothing but a man. You don't notice the little things a woman sees, the signs. Well, this morning I peeped in her room while she slept. Her things were scattered all about the floor. Shoes, stockings, gowns. 
I picked up her under things. And they were torn to shreds. You can't convince me that there's anything wrong with Helen. She's a Devereux. I can tell the minute I look in her eyes. Oh, you're just nervous and upset. Sugar's like all girls these days, up to date and wise. Wise? Do you call a girl wise who drinks and allows men to pour about and tear her clothes? No, Mother, I can't believe you. I won't. I'm off. Wait a minute, Sugar. What's the inspection for, Father? Makeup all right? Everything's all right. Shove off and steer a straight course. <laughs> She's as innocent as a child, I'll swear to it. I try to feel the same way, Tom. But I'm a mother, and it's a mother's duty to watch over her daughter. Well, you old-fashioned mothers have ruined many a real love match by too much supervision and suspicion. My motto is, don't suspect your children of wrong. If you do, you'll wish it on them. I read a lecture the other day by a professor of psychology on the subject. And he says, don't suspect your children, for that very suspicion may fasten itself on them and be responsible for their actions. Oh, Tom, you don't think that Helen suspects that I've been suspicious of her? Well, I wouldn't be surprised. Well, this professor says that mothers are to blame if their daughters turn out wrong, and fathers if their sons go bad. His idea is to discuss sex matters frankly with your children, from the moment they begin to walk and talk and ask questions. Oh, Tom, I can't imagine discussing sex matters with a girl of 14. It's ridiculous. Well, that's what he said. If your boy wants to know where babies come from, don't tell him a stork brought them. Tell him the truth. You horrify me. But that's modernism, he says, and it'll all work out for the best. Hello, everybody. Am I late? I was held up. The traffic is frightful. Hello, Ellen. Hello, dear. So good of you to come. Dinner will be ready at eight. Hello, Tommy. How are you? Fine, sweet. You look gorgeous. Oh. Mother's been worried about Helen again. She's been up late to parties and had a cocktail or two. Well, if that were all, I wouldn't mind. But I saw signs. I know. Oh, I wouldn't worry, Ellen. It doesn't do any good. That's what I told her. Too much interference by mothers has wrecked many a young girl's life. I'm sorry, dear. I didn't mean to bring up the past. I know, Tommy. Ellen, I've never told you of Doris's sad affair, have I? She's always so cheerful, you'd never suspect the tragedy in her life. in the days of David. Three years. Year after year. Wherefore David said unto the Gideonites, <gasps> What do you find so amusing in my sermon? Nothing, Father. It's splendid. It's so appropriate. Mm. There, Beth, is an example of the very thing I am preaching against. Our young people, careless, lawless, godless, traipsing around half-naked. Oh, Father, they're only having fun. 
perfectly innocent fun. Innocent fun? Why? But how could you understand? Beth, I tell you, these modern young rowdies are headed for perdition. What now? I'll go. Larry! It's been three days. But you promised. Oh, but I just had to see you. Yeah. It's a great buy, Miss McDougal. Small cash payment down. Please meet me again tonight, huh? No. If you don't, I'm going right into your father and tell him. Oh, yeah. no. All right, then, will you meet me? Yes. All right. Uh, only seven dollars for the ten bottles. Hmm. How do you do, Mr. Bennett? How do you do, Reverend? Uh, what did you want? He's selling books. Not interested. Well, so Miss McDougal says. We were working. Uh, if you don't mind, we will continue. Good day, Mr. Bennett. I, I guess this isn't a time to talk to him, huh? No. I'll see you tonight. Yes. Good. Bye. He's a nice boy. Yes, he is. He's. You don't suppose he kisses all of his customers, do you? Uh <laughs> You... you love him? Yes, I do. He was going to speak to Father, but I wouldn't let him. Do you suppose if I spoke to Father, he'd release me from my promise? I don't know. Let me see what I can do. And the Israelites were surrounded upon all sides by the Philistines. What is it, Mary? You're always dusting something when you're upset. It's Beth. I'm worried about her. Why? What's the matter with her? Do you realize, John, she has almost no friends of her own age? Oh, nonsense. You are imagining things. Well, she sees plenty of young people at the church. That's not what I mean. Beth's no child. She's 18. And, John, if you remember, I was married to you when I was 18. That is true. But times were different then. This wild harem scarum era was not upon us. You and I did not have to be protected from our environment. And you feel that Beth does? Yes, I feel just that. Otherwise, why do you suppose I asked Beth to give me her solemn promise on this very Bible? Not to marry until she was 22. Four more years. Yes. Four years in which she will have the protection and guidance of a Christian home. But is it normal? Is it fair? I know she'll keep the promise that she made you. But was it right to exact such a promise from her? Well, sometimes I now, feel now, that... Now, 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 Mary. I understand these things much better than you do. <laughs> Why, she has her work. She has my teachings. Oh, I know she will never break her word to me. My daughter wouldn't. But my daughter might.
But you do love me, don't you? You know that I do. Well, here's our out. Laura, you know that I can. Oh, but darling, I'm going away. You know that advertising job? Yes. Well, they want me to come immediately. And if I want to take it, I've got to leave Monday night. Oh, darling, why don't you come with me? Hmm? Oh, I, I know I could make you happy. And I... I want you so much. What can I do? I'm all they have. If I hadn't made that promise to Father... Oh, but he had no right to ask such a thing of you. Hello, kids. How's that for a perfect landing? Uh, need any help? <laughs> he doesn't, but I could use a driver. Hello, Ben. Hello, Horton. Horty tried her best to park this car right in your lap, and I need something for my nerves. We're going out to Woodbine for a snort and a snack. How's for coming along? Want to go along, Ben? I don't think so. Oh, come on, kids. Thoroughly. Sure. Well... Oh, come on, Beth. It'll do you a lot of good. Sure, come on. I'll get you home by 10.30. Sure <laughs> okay. Where the... I might have known you'd be sitting on it. Just a hen at heart. Here you are, kids. Always a classy dresser and a good provider. Stop worrying, I'll get you home. I know, but it's getting late, isn't it? Oh, don't be small town, Beth. It's only half an hour since we ran into you. Oh, well? Well, where is this, uh, uh what do you call it? Uh, wood, uh, vine, wood vine. It's only about four miles. Now, look, we'll go in, we'll have a drink, a sandwich, a dance, and we'll go home. Now, is that fair enough? What do you say, Huh? <laughs> Why not? That a girl. <laughs> you sure you're all right, darling? What? What? You don't want us to take you home, huh? Oh, no, it's, it's early. Well, he just said so. We'll go where the woodbine twineless. And we'll, we'll have a little sandwich and, and a little drink. And... You know, Larry, I've never had a dance with you. Yeah, yeah, that, that's true, darling. But I will tonight. Oh, sure, darling. <laughs> now, where is it? What? The flask, of course. Well, I haven't even seen it. Oh, maybe oh. this is it. Right, dearie, right the first time. Hold the wheel, will you? Oh, well, I'll go down to Mercy Jeff and have a lunch. Yeah, yeah. Now, yeah. 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 trying to sell that idea of marriage to stupid here for years. You never mentioned it to me before. I didn't? Well, then I do now. Madam, I offer you a toast. To life, to love, to marriage. Two, two hearts, two little hands that beat as one. Two, two... Uh, Skip it. Just a pal. Yeah, just a... Well, let's skip that, too. Sure, sure, you, you know, that that's that's what I've been telling her right along. Sure, well, it's just as easy as... as well, look, look, look. 
What's that? Here it is. Look. You know, uh, all we need now is, is someone to say, uh, will you take this man? I do. You, you mean you would, huh? Why not? Two people as much in love as you are should be married. Why not? All right, then that's settled. And I know just how to do it. I'm just a matchmaker at heart. I'm the old happiness vendor. I'm Cupid. I'm Mr. Fix-It. <laughs> hey, hey, off run. The check, the bill, the bad news. Harris, you and a couple of the other boys go around by the kitchen door. Come on, sir. Baby, was that a close one? You're telling me. Well, your girl Friday snagged something out of it. Oh, boy, do I need one after that. Larry, hmm? do you think Deacon Kill Hill saw me? No. That would be terrible. Oh, no, I, I, I don't think so. Anyway, after the night, there's, there's nothing much you can do about it, is there? That's right, Larry. You'll take care of me, won't you? Oh, uh, ye yes, darling. Here you are, Lovebird. This is on me. <laughs> well, did your old Uncle Daniel Boone lead you through the impenetrable forest? Mm -hmm. Right to the very doorstep of law and order and marriage and stuff. You see before you none other than the palatial residence of Justice of the Peace, Michael P. Connors, my long lost friend. And might I add, pal. Come on. You better get the bride ready for a trip to the older or something, huh? Okay. In behalf of the assembled guests, may I extend to you our... Pardon me. As I was saying, have a little drink for yourself. Mr. Connors, we'll bring them right in. <coughs> Do you want to wake up all the dogs in the neighborhood? Hark, the dogs to bark. The beggars are coming to town. Some in rags and some in tags and some in velvet gowns. <laughs> hey, you know, Larry, best should have had a velvet gown. Yeah, when you put yourself together, you got to appear in support of a bride. You're useless, poor, all right. <laughs> come on, honey, come on, come on. Here comes the bride, here comes the bride. Will you sign off? Papa kicked a hole right in your face, precious. Why, you afraid of to be sad, 
you. Come on. Billy, I don't feel just right about this. This is no way for young folks to get married. And uh, you're not any too sober yourself. Well, we, we, we've been celebrating for the occasion, and uh, we've had a few drinks, but, uh, Connors, but they're all right. Yeah, but don't you think you'd better postpone this? Oh, no, no, no. You, you, you see, you see, we have to go to the, the city on Monday. Because they've been engaged for a long, long time, and, and Larry's got a marriage license and everything. Yeah? Show him, Larry. Huh? Show it to him. Oh. Is this girl of legal age? She's more than that. <laughs> Young lady, do you understand the seriousness of the step you are taking? I know all about it. Well, uh, join hands, please. Whom God has joined together, let no man put asunder. I now pronounce you man and wife. <laughs> Congratulations! <laughs> Get away from him. Hmm? Who? Dick and Kill Hale. You remember that, do you? Yes. He saw me. He started towards us, but I don't remember whether he said anything or not. No. No, he didn't. You remember getting out the window, don't you? Yes. Someone followed us. Who was that? No one we know. You remember our climbing that cottonwood tree, don't you? No. Did we? No. That's only because Billy didn't see one. Have we been driving ever since? I'd say we have. What time is it? It's a quarter of five. Quarter of five? Oh, I still have a chance to get in before Mother and Father are up. We'll make it all right. You two wait here for me, will you? And, Horty, keep your hands off the horn. She will. Don't worry. I don't feel any too funny this morning. It's all right. The shades are still down. Yes, Mother's not up. As long as she doesn't know. Imagine that poor kid married and she doesn't even know it. Yes, that was a swell idea you had. Sorry, I don't understand how I could have done such a thing. It was all my fault for taking you to that place. I hope that's all I did. You'd tell me if it's... You were perfectly all right. That's because you were there to take care of me. Good Can you imagine what the Reverend McDougal would have to say to this night's work? You do think of the cutest things. How is it? Everything's okay so far, and it's up to us to keep it that way. Right? Right. Kid. She'll be all right as long as we don't talk. That's what I'm counting on. Now, as far as Beth is concerned, everything is a closed book from the time we left the roadhouse last night. Right? Right. I can't remember a thing. Thanks. Good morning, Father. Oh, 
confess. Listen to this. Last night at the Woodbine Inn, raucous laughter accompanied by the tinkling of glasses and the scraping of dancing feet was suddenly hushed as the forces of law and order, represented by Deacon Kilhale, descended upon this den of sin. You see, my warnings have not been in vain. It is within the power of the editor of this paper to reveal a list of names of the guilty ones that would cause a sensation. This list is only withheld out of consideration for the parents of some of our better known young people. Beth, my child, you see how important our work is since conditions of this kind obtain. And this shall be the text for my sermon on Sunday. of our sons and daughters who leave the paths of uprightness, who rejoice to do evil, and delight in the forwardness of the wicked. What does God say to these rebellious children of this modern age? These young people whom the editor has shielded, withholding their names out of respect for their parents, I tell you have disgraced their Christian teachings. O oh Lord, I invoke your mercy and forgiveness upon these poor wayward creatures before their footsteps lead them to the very doors of perdition. an unpleasant duty to perform, John. Concerning the church? No. Your family. Your sir. She, uh, was at the roadhouse the night we raided it. I thought it best. I appreciate your thoughtfulness, Duncan. We're old friends, John. I can't understand it. My girl. Why? She's always been so honest about everything. How can you account for it? I find that she has not been honest with you for some time. She's been seeing this young Larry Bennett without your knowledge for weeks. Well, I've only seen Bennett at the house once. That was in the daytime, wasn't it? Yes. That was been at night. You know that? Yes. I shall know how to deal with this. And we'll have that half to division. But, Father, I've told you nothing but the truth. How can I know that you have? Because I say so. Hmm. That comes strangely from one who for weeks has been living in deceit. I have told you that... Only what you wanted to. Therefore, I believe only what I wanted. You've always done that, Father. You've always been so, so unreasonable, so... Don't consider it of your happiness. I have tried to guard you by my teachings. Your commands, you mean. A girl who could do what you have done is one who could dare to say that. 
Amongst your teachings, is there not one that speaks of kindness or understanding? I want no suggestions of yours. And I want no more teachings of yours. No. You prefer those of this boy, this lover of yours. Father. What else could he be? He who did not dare to come openly into my home, but must leave... What boy, what friend has ever been allowed to? As long as I can remember, you've denied me the right to think for myself, to choose for myself. You told me that I could not marry. Not only told me, but made me swear on that Bible that I would not. I've kept my word. According to you in this, I have chosen for myself, not a husband, but a lover. You admit it? And if I do, what? I, I could... Why not? It would be as kind as the things you've said. You think that a daughter of mine... I'm tired of your phrases, and I'll listen to them no more. Now or ever. You are threatening? No. I'm telling you. I'm leaving. Leaving this haven of happiness. And I'm glad, glad to go to the one place where I know I'll find happiness, to my lover. But, darling, we can't. Can't what? Why, why... Go away together? Well, yes, if... if... Do you love me? Oh, you know I do. Then that's all that counts. But we can't like this. All right. We'll get married. Oh, no. That's just the one thing we won't do. Oh, please listen to reason. I made a promise, and I'm going to keep it. There'll be some satisfaction in that now. I do love you, Larry. Well, that's all that matters. Why, why, it's raining dreadfully. Oh, you poor dear. It must have been terrible. With this dreadful storm, Tom, I know Helen has been caught up. I feel sure something as dreadful has happened in such an awful night. No, don't worry, dear. Bob's an automobile man. He's a good driver. Don't be so nervous and upset. People have been out in rainstorms before. Forget it. Oh, you're so callous, Tom. You have no feeling at all. I'm worried. I know something has happened. There, I told you. Sit down, dear. Let me answer. Hello. Yes? That you, Helen? What? Oh, that's too bad. Hello. Hello. Hang it, she's hung up. Well, that's that. says Bob skidded off the road, snapped the steering knuckle. Nobody hurt, but they had to walk through the rain to a farm hunt. People gave them dry clothes, and they're going to stay there all night. What did I tell you? Just an excuse to stay out. I know these modern children. You order them right home. Let them rent another car. She did it deliberately. I know it. You get Henry and drive right out and find them. I want her home at once. Well, this is Henry's night off. I'll even take the roadster, and I'm not going to drive that town car all over creation looking for a needle in a haystack and maybe skid off the road myself. Well, I wish I were a man, and I wouldn't stand there doing nothing when my own daughter might be in danger. Danger? Ellen, you're distraught. There's no danger. The two kids are out of the storm in some peaceful farmhouse. I wouldn't know where to look for them if I did go. They might have taken any one of a dozen roads across to the Davises. What's the danger? They're not hurt. Helen said so. You fool, Tom. You awful, awful idiot. Don't you think there's any danger with a young girl and a man together all night in a farmhouse? Most likely they said they were married. And small farmhouses have but one spare room. Now, I won't have that from you or anybody else. I know my daughter. Oh, well, let's not argue. I know everything's going to be all right. Let Doris finish her story. Go on, dear. I know it's no pleasure to you, but I want Ellen to know. 
Mrs. Walker, come here. Did you think I had forgotten about this linen? Oh, no. I'm that busy all day. My dear, never run the apartment house. I mean, never let your husband be the manager of one. All he does is sit around all day and listen to the radio. Not that I'm saying anything against Oscar. Oscar? Mr. Walker. Oh. Now, let me see. Towels for number six. Sheets for number 12. Oh. Then I can get my shoes off. What are you having for supper? Oh, I don't know yet. You don't know? Well, you see, Mr. Bennett said he was bringing something special. Oscar would never think of that. But then you two are young. How long did you say you'd been married? Oh, uh, some time. You know, some people lie about it. Like Mr. and Miss Ewing, down the hall. Did you hear the rumpus last night? Yes. They're out. Oh, Mrs. Ewing seemed so nice, and she drank. No. Oh, yes. And what could you expect? They weren't married. No. Really? Living in sin. Believe me, I gave them a piece of my mind, and I told them to get out. We are running a respectable place. Yes. Is there anything else you want? Oh, no. Well, if there is, just yell. Thanks. Happy? Very. Think you can stand a shock? If you hold me tight. Come here. Woman, I'm leaving you. No. Yes. For good? Well, for about three hours. Fooling? No, really. Oh. Okay by you? Of course. You see, the gang at the office is throwing a party tonight. They wanted me to come to dinner. I sidestepped that, but I've got to show up sometime tonight. Well, I think that's good business. Yeah, that's the way I figured. Maybe that's the way to play this advertising game. I'm sure it is. Of course, everybody of importance from the organization will be there. Sawtell, the boss, and probably his wife. Reynolds from the art department. Dorothy Tate. Bill Ingram. That's that's the that's the, the Benison man. Oh, and Mr. Larry Bennett of the contract department. Sure. That's probably Mrs. Walker. I'll answer it. Hello? For you. Hello. Oh, hello, Dottie. Okay, I'll be right down. Dottie Tate in the... Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I, I think I'd better be going, huh? Yes, don't keep the sawtails waiting. No. You sure you really don't mind? You have a good time. I don't. Bye. I thought you said Mr. and Mrs. Sartell were with you. I think I did. Disappointed? No. I'll get in. Oh, she won't mind. Who? The lady who answered the phone. Oh, <laughs> she's only my... Uh... Yes, I know. She's your cousin from Peoria. Yeah. 
Sorry, we have to have other people tonight. Oh, but but I, I I thought that was the idea. Well, I guess it is. And see what some of your girls in the next town will have. You're doing all right, aren't you? You didn't do so badly yourself, did you? I came home sooner than I expected. I got that contract. Is that all you got? Our Mr. Bennett. Go on, tell me all about it. Rising young advertising man. Go on, tell me. I need a laugh. No, don't tell me. I know all about it, and I'm tired of listening. If you know how you got in here, pick out the way you came in. You're good at sneaking. He's probably waiting for you now, down in the car. Who? The woman who kisses rising young advertising men. Beth, what are you... I, I, I can't believe it. I didn't believe it either until I saw it. My dear, it's Mr. and Mrs. Sawtell. They're calling for me. Where have you been? Places. With whom? Ask me no questions and I'll tell you no lies. Beth, you better tell me because... I'll tell you a lot of things. In the first place, I'm sorry I wasn't sitting up waiting for you. I was fool enough to once. Let me look. He's wiped it off. He's getting smart. What are you talking about? Ruse. Rouge on your lips. Dottie's rouge. I wiped it off the night you came home drunk. Would you have done that for me? Wiped off another man's rouge from my lips. I mean, lips. Nah. <laughs> go away from me. Go on. Go away from me. Who were you with? A mutual friend. Oh, I have my moments and my friends. Who do you suppose is what? Guess who? You'll strike me. Go on. Father was going to do that once. I wish he had. But I told him I was in love with you and... Who was it? Billy McGee. Billy McGee? That's right. You and Dottie and Billy and me. Where is he now? He's with Dottie. I mean... Listen, will you talk sense? I talk. With Dottie from your room. She wasn't satisfied with being there with you. She had to tell me about it. Oh, you're crazy. Not anymore. I was once, but I'm not anymore. I tried to phone you long distance, but I couldn't get you. Dottie was more successful. So what's good for the sauce is good for the goose. <laughs> I mean, you wanted Dottie and I wanted Billy. And now everything's easy. And I'm tired, Larry. I'm tired and everything's wrong. It's wrong.
You know, Larry, you should have married me anyway, no matter what I said. I'm going to get married. I'm going to be married now. Then I can meet nice people. And my husband will take me with him. And he'll say, meet my wife, Mrs. Another picture of ice water. Come on. Get your clothes on. Who says so? You get your clothes on or you go with me that way. Uh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Who the... Uh, it would be you. Come on. Hey, you can't toss me around. I'll beat your ears off if you don't snap out of it. Boy, if I only had my strength back. Yeah, I'd... you'd probably reach for another drink. You'd probably pour best one, too. Huh. A great friend, Billy. Yeah, a great friend. Hey, where do you get off to ball me up? Seems to me you were pouring your drinks the last time I saw you. Yeah. Yeah, and look where it got us. Yeah, sure. You didn't have nerve enough to tell her you'd married her. I'm sorry to have to do this, but after all, we are running a respectable apartment house. I've probably been the biggest idiot in the world. You can figure that out for yourself. You can figure this out, too. All I did last night was sit and listen to a girl named Beth raving about you. Now, come on, let's go get this thing straightened out. She's gone. Gone where? I, I don't know. Well, where would she go? I don't know. I do. Why, we're saps not to think of it before. That girl's gone home. Oh, I, 
I hope so. Why, of course she has. Come on, let's grab my car and get going. No matter why you came home, dear, you're here. Surprise. If you were unhappy, your letters didn't say so. I wasn't until just a few days ago. And... Oh, Mother. I don't suppose I can be of any help. You suppose right. Well, you must admit, I'm an old friend of the family. Oh, Billy, you're a fool, but you're all right. Mr. McDougall. You're not welcome here. Well, whether I am or not, you're going to listen to me just the same. This is important, Mr. McDougall. Not only to me, but to you. Where is Beth? Why, I don't know. I'd, I'd hoped that she were here. Come in. So you see, Ma... I suppose I should have told her that I'd married her. But I knew that she promised you not to marry anyone. It's Larry. If you had told her, you would have saved a lot of unhappiness for all of us. A fine chance either of us had to explain anything. And I doubt if we can explain anything now. Yes, you can. You married her. That's important. Maybe I'm wrong. To me, that is important. My boy, we will find her. I will tell her that I'm sorry. I can understand that, that that won't be easy, sir. I... I am not so sure. Maybe I'd be glad to. down to business. All right. Tom, tell me, is anything wrong? I want to know. Now, my dear, keep your pants, your shoes on. Nothing's wrong except the two kids are married. 
They're coming home in the morning. Married? Married? Yes. The farmhouse was a minister's, so they decided to take advantage of his hospitality and his services. Oh, I always did like Bob Crowder. Yes. I always thought he was such a fine, lovely boy. Yes, you did <laughs> not. <laughs> <laughs>